because we can interact and we when we have the freedom to interact and, and to be in a market and to to you know get the the best amount of uh, productivity for the least amount of work and and to we see this in history we this it's absolutely positive that as as we are a more productive people as we take less energy and less time to survive you know as our survival rates go up and it's easier for us to exist as a people we we realize hey you know we all have individual rights we all have the ability to interact with each other and and we have the ability to to have freedom and that's exactly it um, that we do have the right to have freedom. And I think, as, as you said, as we go through uh, the history, and we went back to Cicero, uh, we went back to Solon, through Cicero, to Locke, we see that advancement. What we see is that that advancement manifested itself in the formation of a middle class, something that really did not exist throughout history. Mm -hmm. And you found not only was it a middle class who, they weren't the elite, the wealthy, they weren't the the peasants, uh, you know, the, the extremely poor. They were somewhere in the middle. They had more than most, not as much as some. And they were able to educate themselves. And all of a sudden, you had the the, the lower end of the society, right? The forty nine percent, if you will, um, really educated themselves. And as you said, they started looking and going, "Wait a second, what does this mean?" What is the meaning of life? Let me read the Bible. Let me read these things. Let me ponder the thoughts. And sure enough, someone's going to come along and say, where do I have the right to do something? Don't I have the right to do this? Why do I have to have permission to do it? And that's what we see happening. That's why in America, in the 1800s, you saw that magnificent growth because government was restricted in getting involved. Everywhere else on the planet, government was in complete control of everything, except in America. Government had little control, had influence at best, and you saw the magnificent growth. And what have we seen lately? The exact opposite. The bigger government gets, it seems the worse off we become. So right. there's, there's a trend in there. We may want to pay attention to it because if you look back into, into Rome, into the Roman Republic, you see something similar. It mirrors it. It's kind of freaky. It might scare you. But, uh, you know, <laughs> take the blue pill or take the red pill. Your choice. <laughs> well, John, it looks like we've only got up to John Locke, so we probably have to cover William Blackstone on law another time. Yeah, just real quick, William. Blackstone took a look at, uh, at the, um, uh, the laws of England and made the English law look at itself. Um, that's, I'll wrap it up in that little piece right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could pick that up at another time. Well, we have come to the top of our hour and the end of our, our two hours here. But luckily, we don't have a show that's coming on after us, so we are allowed to run just a little bit over. So we're, we're afforded that, um, uh, that right. Is that it? Is it all right yeah. to run over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have any problem continuing. I just, uh, you know, I just wanted you to know in case you were your recording was going to stop. <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's like the Energizer Buddy. It just goes on and on and on. Anyway, yeah, we, we've come to the uh, to the end of our show here, and uh, I hope that uh, that you've enjoyed um, listening to us as we have gone back and explored uh, the roots of our freedom, and uh, hopefully you've learned something. Um, I've enjoyed having everyone in the chat room, and thank you for Texas for uh, for coming on the line and staying with us through this and uh, and chipping in and helping us out. I greatly appreciate it. It's wonderful to have you. You're uh, welcome. The more the merrier, and uh, we look forward to our continued conversation with you. <laughs> <laughs>